Good afternoon, Mr. Wayne. I remember you asking me about the importance of internal control last meeting. I'm sorry we ran out of time to have a discussion about the topic. There, I briefly prepared to explain you about what exactly an internal control is and why it is important. Do you remember when we talked about uh, so many big and small frauds taking places all around the world? In case you don't remember, we read about uh, an article about how a director of TZ Limited embezzled $6.25 million from the fund of the company. The position of director has almost unlimited authority in the access in company. So oneself has to be responsible, plus there should always somebody or systems to keep everything checked. We also talked about how transaction system architects in corporation has overstated revenues in great amount and now became ACI worldwide after the downfalls. That wasn't it. We also examined the case that president of apartment resident and the management officer see fund of $100 million of apartment management fees. So where does the fraud take place? From big firms like TZ Limited in Australia or TSA in States to a small apartment in Korea. Who commits the fraud? From a director of the company to a resident of the apartment. The frauds all around the world is not a far away thing. They are right next to us. So how do we prevent this kind of frauds? Through internal control. So what is an internal control? The objective of the internal control is very straightforward. First, safeguard. Second, efficiency. Third, reliability. Fourth, compliance. We need to be reasonably assured that we can achieve these objects through internal controls. In other words, through the control, you can protect and use assets or resources effectively and efficiently. You can rely on the records the entity makes. And you can be assured that entity is following the rules and regulations. So can you see? If the objectives of internal control are satisfied 100%, there are no big worries of all different kinds of frauds taking places. Then let's see the components of the internal control. In fact, the components, effectiveness, how it is processed, and even the objects of the internal control are progressing and changing as the time passes. Here, I won't go too deep about modern ethics, but I'll surely talk about the fundamental and the base of the internal control. So, before the modern updates, there were five big components of internal control. Control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, and monitoring. Let's first think about the control environment. Basically, it's the most fundamental concept that constructs over internal controls. The control environment is management, <coughs> oversight, integrity, and uh, ethical principle. It's the management's philosophy in operating the company. It's the mani management's method of assigning authority and responsibility about organizing and developing employees. To set this up straight, participation of outside directors, audit committee, and the internal audit team is very important. Second, uh, risk assessment. Just as what, uh, what is said, it's the process of recognizing and assessing the risk that organization possess. Not only noting the existing risks, but the risk assessments should also analyze the potential of risks by cost-benefit analysis. Third, control activities. To effectively manage the recognized risks in risk assessment process, control activity is a pro uh, process of setting principles and procedures and assure the compliance of them. <clears throat> this process may be done manually or through automated system. For example, Activities like backups of application or network securities should be consistent with the automated system. However, uh, activities regarding verifying, reconciliating, or implementing new changes should be done manually. Some good examples of control activities is a good audit trail, which is a process of following the paths of reports data back to the source documents to detect initial errors and fix it. And also, separation of duties in authorizing transactions recording transactions, and maintaining custody of assets are important so that one employee doesn't get two different duties that can arise from. In other words, it's, it just helps employees check each other's work so they don't commit a fraud. Fourth, information and communication. To enable personnel uh, to fulfill their responsibilities, the information should be identified, uh, retained, and transferred at the right time. 
Open communication with all of the stakeholders is very essential. Effective information and communication process enables the company to record and report the transactions properly and maintain accountability related to the assets. <clears throat> Last but not least, monitoring process of internal control is very, very important. This process involves important duty of internal audit auditors to stay independent and regularly uh, review the internal control systems and report to audit committee. So these are the uh, five basics internal controls components. Just to briefly talk about three new control components, their objective setting, event identification, and risk response. <clears throat> they seem to be confusing and new, but I covered most of them talking previously five components. We talked about objective of uh, internal control at the very first part of the video. And uh, when identification is basically a process you identify and analyze threats. As we did in risk assessment, risk response is a process of implementing cost-effective countermeasures. I talked about this when I explained about contract activities. In other words, these three new components are not hard, brand new, uh, new ideas. Just think about, uh, think that it broke down the five components in more detailed manner. I'll wrap up this video by talking about integrated security for the organization in order to facilitate effective internal control. They include physical, logical, and integrated security. So, the physical security is literally the measures used to protect its physical resources and facilities. Logical security involves limiting the access to a system and information to authorized individuals. In other words, it's a security of preventing the uh, information that might enable other parties may commit a fraud. And if it combines these two elements, uh, that's what we call integrated security. It's supported by comp a comprehensive security policy. Now, talking briefly about internal control, do you feel this is too much complicated or complex process? No. If we think about the process a little bit more carefully, it is the control that we need, obviously, in order to prevent the possible frauds. Think simple. Internal control is an obvious but indispensable system that we need. Thank you.